Hello boys and girls, my name's Tom and today on the show I'll be keeping a close eye on Picard. We're embroiled in a game of subterfuge and I don't know who I can trust. This is Safe House. It's been a week of disappointment, with Neil Blomkamp's Alien being put on hold, Matthew McConaughey turning down the role of the villain in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and the news that Hugo Strange and Mr Freeze will be joining the rogues gallery of Gotham. The fact that they're in it isn't the disappointing part, Gotham's just shit. But with the bad comes the good, we've got a teaser for Preacher, uh, various TV spots for X-Files and Jessica Jones, and a slew of new video game releases, some of which have been shown off at Paris Games Week. And for more on that, here's my good friend and co-host James Pickard. Paris Games Week was very much the Sony show after they skipped Gamescom earlier this year. Before we move on to them though, Square Enix did have a very small showing of their own, including the announcement of a new Nier project, Automata, and um, they sold burgers based on Final Fantasy XV, because they ain't got anything new to show from that yet. Anyway, Sony had another strong press conference after their E3 show earlier in the year, finally revealing that we're going to get to play No Man's Sky in June 2016 and start exploring those 10 bazillion gazillion planets. Elsewhere, Resogun developers Housemark announced their latest sci-fi action game, Matterfall, uh, Drive Club is going to get bikes, because you need a reason to play Drive Club. And Avicii, the famous EDM superstar DJ, is uh, going to make a music rhythm game. It's going to be revolutionary apparently, so we can only assume that you have to learn to press play at the right time. We finally got a chance to see some more from Horizon Zero Dawn, the uh, Robo Dinosaur action RPG from the developers of Killzone. A new footage showed the game's herring Aloy setting traps and hunting after some of the game's Robo Dinosaurs in a post-apocalyptic future. As one of the most exciting reveals from Sony's E3 conference, it's good to see this footage continues to build the hype up. David Cage is back with a new game. Him and his French development team Quantic Dream announced Detroit Become Human. We were shown a fairly lengthy CGI trailer introducing us to a near future scenario in which androids are owned by the majority of the human population. The protagonist, Kara, is one of these androids who has somehow gained some kind of sentience and has to deal with a world where the rest of her kind are treated as tools or slaves. David Cage has already been himself and gone on record to say this is not a sci-fi game despite it quite clearly being a sci-fi game. Expect a bunch of weird QTEs and human emotions to somehow seep into it. So Spectre's out. We uh, went to see it last week and it's brilliant really. It manages to keep the same gravity and big action set pieces as other recent Bond outings with a touch more absurdity and wry humour that the older entries in the franchise are known for. It's Daniel Craig's fourth Bond film and the second from director Sam Mendes and has fantastic performances from a supporting cast that has Leah Seydoux, Dave Bautista, Ray Fiennes, Ben Wyshaw and most notably Christoph Waltz who really is just brilliant. But this is all first page Google search stuff. Things you probably already know. But here's some things you didn't know. Former WWE World Heavyweight Champion Dave Batista plays a silent assassin by the name of Mr. Hinks, but he wasn't the first choice of wrestling superstar for the role. Only one other man could do the job, and his name is John Cena! Mr. White, who previously appeared in earlier Daniel Craig Bond films, returns to offer some advice to our protagonist. Although he does say, you're a c dancing in a hurricane, which is just rude really. With Daniel Craig now at 47, some believe that maybe he's getting too old for the role. But I don't believe that's the case, not when you consider that James Bond himself is what, like 90 by now? If you believe the one Bond theory? Which you shouldn't because it's bullshit. Andrew Scott also plays a vital part in Spectre. Scott, famous for playing Moriarty in Sherlock, appears as also Moriarty, with a barely suppressed Irish accent. Daniel Craig's announced that 
barring a dire need for the money, this has been his last outing as the super spy. Idris Elba, Damian Lewis and Tom Hardy are all popular actors to take over the role, but I think you know who we're rooting for. Mr. Robot recently made its way onto Amazon Prime over here in the UK after months of hype over in the US. Uh, the cybercrime thriller stars Rami Malek as a computer technician who moonlights as a computer hacker trying to take down the 1%. It risks falling a little foul to the protagonist's mental illness is his flaw trope, but his paranoia and inner monologue really bring you into his situation. Having watched the first handful of episodes or so, I can definitely say it lives up to the reputation it's got. It's a smart, uh, well-produced show that deals with a lot of themes and ideas that are relevant to our modern world. For the past many moons, myself and Picard have been talking about our anticipation for the Guild Wars 2 expansion, Heart of Thorns. And that day has finally come. Heart of Thorns was released on the 23rd of October and we've got well and truly stuck in, and there's a lot to see when you get into it. One new class, a new elite specialisation for every class, four new maps and a whole host of new mechanics for combat and traversing the environment, all alongside a rich new story. The packed fleet has been shot down by Mordremoth over the Maguma jungle and Destiny's Edge are missing, which for those who have never played Guild Wars is like saying all the best soldiers in the world and the fantasy equivalent of the Justice League, just got swatted out of the sky by a giant dragon made out of trees. There's a huge focus on big chain events, completing one challenge to open the next, and every new map has this fantastic verticality to it. You'll find yourself gliding off tall structures and bouncing back up to them on bouncy mushrooms. Suddenly the world itself has become a challenge. We've been saying for the longest time that what Guild Wars 2 direly needed was some high level challenging PvE content, and that's what Heart of Thorns gives us. No more sulking off to PvP the moment you hit level cap, because now there's a game's worth of stuff to do just for your max level heroes. Heart of Thorns is available now, and if you want to dip your proverbial toe in the waters of Guild Wars, the base game has gone free to play, so I strongly suggest you check it out. So that's about all we have time for. Yes, uh, if you enjoyed anything you saw today, do feel free to give us likes, comments, subscriptions, all that stuff. Yeah. We feed off of it, don't we? Yes, we, we live for it. Uh, yes, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.